The Bezier is how we make irregular shapes in Nuke. Once you've got one loaded, it's Command Option Click in the window, and there we are. We have two contextual menus. It's the one over the points we want. The one over the window produces contextual menu specific to the viewer. We don't want that. So you can see all these menu items there. Let's just go through the important ones. Currently that transition is smooth. Let's cusp it with a C and smooth again with a Z. If we press Z a few times we have degrees of smoothness. You'll notice that these fellows they move together like any Bezier. If we press X little apparent change but now we can move them separately. So that's broken it. Z again to smooth up. We can go to the contextual menu for a blur but it's easy just to command option drag on that and we have a couple of flavors of blur. We have some very nice blurs. We've got a smooth going in one direction in the other and in the middle. My favorite is smooth zero and that weights the blur towards the white shape. It's good for masking. Uh, be careful not to take these things the wrong way. We can occasionally get unwanted artifacts that way. So I just have this pulled out. We can, for instance, find ourselves in a situation where our blur crosses over. And if you if I switch off the on-screen controls, that looks a bit odd. So pull your blur in one direction. Let's unblur, select all, contextual menu, and unblur. Right. We can move a shape around once we've selected all of the points. We can scale it by dragging the circle. We can squash it and stretch it on any axis. We can also rotate it. We can do that just at say two points. If we squash two points there, what we've done is align them which is sometimes what we want. I've got two selected there. I command drag this center, take it over here and pull that down. Okay. Now a lot of those controls are in the uh, second tab of the Bezier, the first being over there. So what else have we got? Okay, right. Yes, uh, the blur, there's another kind of blur. There's one that operates on the entire shape. Let's smooth that again. Okay. Now that blur does go in two directions. I'd caution against making it go inside because we have these unfortunate artifacts there. So usually outside. The other thing you've got to be careful of is this auto key. Auto key is on default, so if you move it to another point, you might find that you've animated it if you've uh, moved a point somewhere along that timeline. So let's go back to the beginning and right click, no animation and untick auto key. So that's the Bezier. Very powerful, very nice little shapes. One thing that it can't do is another shape. So if I tried clicking in that window for another shape, it won't supply one. I can, should I want though, just load up another Bezier above it and click in that. Okay. And should I want some kind of interaction between these two, some exclusion or addition or something, I can feed both of those into a um, into a merge node. Okay, the Bezier shape.